What's wrong with you? Excuse me? People take this job to get away from something. So what's wrong? Hello everyone. Today we're gonna go back to one of my favorite video games ever and talk about the mystery of Firewatch books. For all those who have played Firewatch before, you might have encountered one of the most, if not the most, important easter egg in the game. And that is, in my opinion, the great number of books you can find all around the caches, hideouts, and watchtowers. All of these books are not just decorations, but you can actually collect them in your tower. The coolest thing about these books is that some of them are made up, others are real books that actually exist in real life, and others contain references of other video games. But the mysterious thing about these books is the fact that you can collect them, but you can't open them. They're just a cover full of pages you will never be able to read. And that is certainly intriguing considering there's plenty of books that aren't actually real and were written by a made up author. For those who have never played this game, or for those who have played this game years ago, like I did, in brief summary, Firewatch is a first person adventure game. Some might call it a walking simulator, make with that what you will, and it is set in the Wyoming wilderness. And we are a fire lookout named Henry, a man who takes the job following personal troubles in his life, including his wife's early onset dementia. His only means of communication is a walkie-talkie, through which he communicates with his supervisor called Delilah, who is stationed in another lookout tower. The two of them develop sort of a relationship over the course of the summer through all their conversations. The game's narrative unfolds through dialogue, exploration, and discoveries, and one of them are the books. So, the purpose of this video is to sort of investigate and explain every book we can encounter, and talk about it and its meaning if it's possible. So, without any further explanation, let's just get into it. While some were able to find a book on day one, the first time I found myself with a book in my hand was in day number two, when we found ourselves waking up after a very troublesome night where Henry reports vandalism on his tower. I opened a drawer and found a book called Eight the Hard Way by Richard Sturgeon. Inside Henry's tower, which really is called the Two Forks Lookout because it is located in Two Forks, you can actually find around six books in total. Glory by McManus, The Singular Mind by Dr. Jonas Allard, The Birds of Wyoming by George Sinclair, Death Strikes at Two by Richard Sturgeon, The Patriots by Donald Anderson, and of course, A Troll the Hard Way by Richard Sturgeon. Now, the first thing we can actually see is that we find two books by the same exact author, Richard Sturgeon. It wasn't quick for me to realize this guy doesn't really exist. By that I mean it doesn't really exist in real life. Well, he kinda does, but he's an Argentinian painter that has nothing to do with the game's development at all, trust me. As far as I know, even his art is unrelated in every single way. It's cool, but it has nothing to do with anything, sadly. Amongst all these books, the one that has some meaning behind it is The Patriots by Donald Anderson. This is one of the books Henry brings with him from Colorado to read during the summer. The book is mainly about everything behind many of the events in the Metal Gear Solid franchise. The cover art is a revolver with the American flag on it, further referencing Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots. And the book is also written by Donald Anderson, also known as the DARPA chief of Metal Gear Solid No. 1. You can now go outside and explore the wilderness, and in there, some of the key things to find are caches. These are full of important supplies you're going to need to survive, and keep exploring in the game. There's a total of 9 caches, but only 4 of them contain books. The first cache we'll talk about is Cache 302, which is located in Beartooth Point, an area of two forks that makes up the majority of the northeast corner of the map. Inside this cache, you will find a wood board, three pine cones, a note from Ron, but most importantly, the book Six Feet Down Under, also written by your made-up guy, Richard Sturgeon. The cover makes us realize that this author most likely writes about murder mystery, 
type of novels, which definitely adds a layer of darkness to the game. The next cache is Cache 305, located in Jonesy Lake. It is the largest body of water in the game. In the western side of the map, you will find an old sweater, another note from Ron, and the fourth estate book, also by Richard Sturgeon, this time with a school on the cover. By this point, I still remember my first playthrough and I figured out these books had to be collected, especially because of the title of every single book. So far we have four books by Sturgeon, and all of them which contain a number in their title. That led me to try and gather them all and figure out if there's a secret I could discover. But the most important cache is cache 307, located in Ruby River in the southeast of Two Forks. The reason why this is the most important cache is because in here we can find four different books. One Chance to Die by Richard Sturgeon, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, Terminal 7 by Richard Sturgeon, and The Accidental Savior by Terence L. Greenbrier. The only real book in here is Jane Eyre. It's a classic about a man whose wife is insane and it's locked away and he tries to forget about it. This could be a parallel between the main character Henry, who found a job as far as possible from her wife to escape her from her dementia. Let's not forget, the man from Jane Eyre also lived his life by ignoring the fact her wife exists by including a love with another woman. In this game, that woman could be Delilah, which as this game progresses, we can find Henry developing some feelings towards her if you allow it, of course. Also, in this exact same cache, we can find the book The Accidental Savior by a fictional author called Terence L. Greenbrier. This is the father of the protagonist of the game, Gone Home. It's a clear reference to a game which may be quite similar in terms of gameplay. I have personally never played this game before, even though I bought it years ago, so it might be time to try it out. As far as I know though, in the Gone Home game, the dad's book had just been picked up by a new publisher and were slated for reprinting, which means this book was actually written by the character in the book and it isn't just a distant reference. It is also important to note that back in the Jonesy Lake, we can also see the Christmas duck from Gone Home as well. The last cache we'll be talking about is cache 308, located in Cottonwood Creek in South Central Two Forks. In here, we got a cache which only contains one book, Three Blind Rats by Richard Sturgeon another book going straight to the Richard Sturgeon numbered collection. By this time, we are only missing number 5, number 9, and number 10, I think. One of them will be in Brian's hideout. Brian's Goodwin's hiding spot is a location in the east central part of Two Forks. It is accessed via the north exit of Cave 452. This is where Brian Goodwin spent much of his time as evidenced by the elaborate decoration and furnishing of the hiding spot and the many personal possessions he left there. There we will also find the Five Degrees North by Richard Sturgeon and the Black Band comic book that is the only comic book in this game. Another important hideout is Ned's Goodwin's bunker. It is found on a hill overlooking the lake trail and is only accessible late in the story. Inside the bunker, several different items can be seen, most likely collected by Ned Goodwin throughout his time living within the Two Forks area. Inside this bunker, we can find three books in total, Wizards and Wyverns, which is a role-playing rulebook. We also have A Stevens Room by Howard Crother and Nine Lives Lost by Richard Sturgeon. The last book from the Richard Sturgeon series is found in Camp Arapaho, which is located in the southeast corner of the map. It is an abandoned Boy Scout camp that plays host to a crew doing controlled burns of trees in the area. In there, we will find a book called 10 to 1, with eight bodies crossed out in the cover. The collection was complete, and it was time to take the last book to Henry's Tower. But before that, we could also mention one of the last scenes of the game when we are finally able to go to our distant watchtower friend, Delilah, the thoroughfare lookout. In her watchtower, we can find around three books in total. Lucian's Gambit by Timothy Howell, which is book number 16 of the Chronicles of Grindel, 
which means that while Henry was looking for Richard Sturgeon books, it seems that Delilah found more interest in Timothy Howell. Also, there's two more books to check out, 1001 Crosswords and 1001 More Crosswords. So it seems that Delilah spent much of her free time doing crosswords to kill the day. But back to our own 10 book series we were able to collect, it took me a while, years ago, to complete this collection of books. And after trying everything with them, I realized all my efforts were fruitless. There's nothing to discover. These books were just references, or in some cases, just covers to collect. But it was fun to find other players trying to find ways in which these books may reveal something. But again, it all was fruitless. But despite all that, it's definitely one of the coolest easter eggs that led to plenty of gamers to try and collect every single book available, simply for pure enjoyment, while others were in search of meaning or in search of discovering the unknown. It doesn't matter why you decided to collect these books, what it matters is that you did. While Firewatch explores themes of isolation, loneliness, personal growth, and even the complexities of human relationships, the game's narrative is driven not only by their evolving bond between Henry and Delilah, but also by all the mysteries Henry uncovers in the forest. And surrounding all that chaos, the only thing that feels peaceful and organized is Henry's collection of books. In order from 1 to 10, Richard Sturgeon's series of made-up books felt like finding a tiny window of purpose and tranquility. Collecting these books isn't really a mystery after all. It is just what a man does on his own in the middle of the forest. So just stay in your tower, okay? Stay in there and watch. If you like this video, you can subscribe to my channel, maybe leave a like, leave a comment, and I hope we can keep in touch. Goodbye. Ready for the mosh pit, Shaka bra?